Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet. Thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live from a little guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you are listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station. I had a fantastic time this weekend at the Memphis Metaphysical Fair. Lots of really good things came out of that experience for me. As soon as I walked in on Sunday morning, there was a filming crew there. And they looked at all the vending boots, and I just so happened to have the word transformation on my table tent, so to speak. And they invited me to be one of the major players in an upcoming documentary made out of California by uh, some people who are rubbing elbows with lots of big people. This is a major documentary, and it's going to be titled, I believe, Mind, Body, and Spirit Spirit Saying Yes to You. And so as soon as I got there in the morning, <laughs> I had this, op- this amazing window just open up. Um, very, very cool. But I gleaned a lot of things at this fair. I think Center of Light is now becoming very, very present with a lot of people who came in from out of town. Everyone is starting to move to the rhythm of Center of Light Radio, and I'm really, really digging <laughs> that. Uh, Kenneth Pass. Um, let's go back to Kenneth Pass. He was a recent guest on Center of Light Radio. He tells me during this interview that he was abducted on a camping trip, hiking trip, and picked up and brought back, listen to this, y'all, and it's hard to believe, but I tend to believe the guy, I do, 10,000 years, and he was with these alien beings for two years ish. Um, And while he was with these others, they uh, got him upset one day. So he took a piece of their powerful technology and hit it in Arizona somewhere. And if you're familiar with Prophecy Rock, the petroglyph that you see in Prophecy Rock, Kenneth swears that that is him and others coming out of the craft. So the gig is he wants to go back to Arizona after 10,000 years to find this piece of technology and bring it back to the Hopi and the Pueblo because he says they will know what to do with this technology. So we want to raise money for Kenneth. We need about $500. We're almost there. A couple bucks if you got it. Uh, The gig is Kenneth's a very simple guy. He doesn't drive anywhere. We want to put him on the bus, take him back to Arizona to find this artifact so he can bring it to the Hopi. And he's going to log his experience and make for a part two on Center of Light Radio. Wow. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. So if you go to centerofletradio.com, once the page settles and there's a flying saucer that's going to whiz across the stream, of course, when it settles, you'll see a donate button. Click that thing and let's get Kenneth to Arizona, wherever it is that he needs to go. Swamji Biswa Yogi, God realized man from India. I had the blessed opportunity to interview him three times. This is, this is going to be my third. And as I always say, when you're in the presence of a <laughs> a lumen being like this wow 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 it's something to be felt not something to be spoken about that's for sure stay tuned for that information um i do lots of things lots of services you can go to center of light radio i do speaking engagement spiritual readings life coaching as well as removing dark entities from your house and this is no joke when they're they in your home and making you upset and you have no peace i will not leave you until it's done, until we remove those and your house becomes a home again. I will not leave you. I will stay there for the duration. And I promise you, I come up with a bag of tricks. I come up with some powerful spiritual arsenal, as well as speaking with you about self-reflection as to why this has been brought into your experience. And uh, we'll make sure that they scram. If, you know, if they're squatters and they're not paying rent, pfft, let's get them out. Let's get right down to Center of Light Radio business. If you want to call into the show, 888-919-2355, 888-919-2355 is the number you dial to get on Center of Light Radio to speak to my awesome, powerful, doing her work guest, Christy Reeves. Today's show is going to be titled Indigo and Rainbow Children and the New Golden age. Christy Reeves is an actress, producer, international speaker, and author. For the past six years, she has been producing and interviewing on the series Children of the Rainbow, a documentary series about the new generation of indigo, crystal, and rainbow children. She is also the host of the radio slash TV show Rebel Hearts with Christy Reeves. I've seen it. It's very finely done. 
It's very, very fu- finely done. At UBN, Universal Broadcasting Network. Um, I'm going to let Christy tell us where we can. I think it's ChristyReeves.com, and that's K-R-I-S-T-I-E, Reeves, R-E-E-V-E-S.com. Welcome to Cinelight Radio, Ms. Christy Reeves. Thank you so much, Keith. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. It's so great to be back here with you. Well, you deserve it. That's exactly who you are and what you're doing. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. So what is going on with you? Give me an up. Actually, let's 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 step back a bit. Last time I had you on Center of Light Radio, we did talk about the gifted children, the children of light, the rainbow children, crystal children, indigo children. What has changed in your findings, your discoveries? You're working with children and you're talking about it. what is now going on with the children of light? I feel humanity is ready. I feel that everything that is happening on this planet and this world right now. We are really going to know, through an awakening process, realizing that we cannot sit around and wait for others to do the job, that we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones who need to step it up. And we call it, you know, we are in a messianic age. And the prophets, the mystics of the Kabbalah talked about it. Several Native American prophecy talked about it. Or, um, even, even the Vedic Indian traditions talked about it, that there would become a time that is called the Messianic Age. And in the past, it's, you know, there was a Messiah, a teacher who showed up to create great changes, such as Buddha or Yeshua or even King Arthur uniting England, reuniting England. But, and in the past, it's always been one person who created that change for others. And the messianic age that we moved in, the difference is that it's not going to be one person who's going to save everyone. or It's not going to be one person who's going to create the change. We are becoming our own messiah. And we are being asked to be the ones to create this change on the planet. And I think that is the awakening that we have gone through, even looking at the political climate, looking what's going on in the world where people are not sitting around waiting for the politicians to step it up and create the changes, but where the people are saying, hey, it's up to us to create some changes. And I think that is the big change that has happened since the last time I spoke with you. I totally get it. And I think I think everyone in the world is looking for something. They may not know what they're looking for, but I can see it in their eyes that People are uprising, be it in a peaceful protest, and some are just flat out pissed off. Um, and they're both going toward the same good cause, but I totally agree with that. Does your show Rebel Hearts, is this about just, a, is it a general platform? Is Rebel Hearts always about the presentation and bringing forth knowledge of children of light? Indigo, let's call this an umbrella term, the children of light. Um, is this what your show is about or is it about different things? Originally, we were going to do the show about the indigos and the rainbow children, but then I said, well, the indigos are the rebels of the world. They're the ones who are creating change. So what we're doing on the show, we're talking about how we can implement change on this planet. The show is to empower people to really become, you know, those change makers, the paradigm shifters, the rebels who are creating, you know, a better planet, a better world. So, that's so let, me, let me ask you that question. How can we bring about further change of global unity and peace and all these wonderful qualities that we know the prophecy of heaven on earth to be about? I think there's so many different ways to go. But I mean, you're doing it with your show. You're doing it with your music. You're doing it with the work you're doing. And I feel every single person has and how they can contribute to that change. And I feel the biggest thing or the biggest obstacle that we have been facing, and it's something that the rainbow children and the indigos are teaching us, the biggest obstacle that we are facing is that the systems, the authorities we had around us have been telling us, hey, this is what you should believe it. This is how you should live your life. Or this is our expectation level that you need to need to rise up to. We are not being taught to listen within and find out how can I contribute to the change? What is my mission? What is my passion? What is my contribution? What are my special gifts, my special knowledge that I'm even bringing in from other lifetimes? What is it that is so innately within me that I can bring forth in the world to create a better planet? 
And I think this is where the Indigos and Chris's are going, hey, look at us. This is what we are doing. Because these kids, we call, you know, especially the Indigos, we call them system busters. They don't submit to authority. They stand up. They speak their truth. They speak through lies. They don't say, okay, just because you're my teacher, you know more than I do or you know better than I do. If I know something and I feel within that this is true, I will speak that truth and I will live that truth. I feel like this is how the indigos and the rainbows are guiding us and leading the way for the rest of humanity to awaken to their divine purpose, their divine mission, and this great inner truth that every single person on this planet harbors. Do you think that these children, they've been coming in for quite a few years now, let's say the ones that are about 14, 15, 16 years old, that it's just possible they have piercing in every possible orifice on their body. <laughs> and they're, they're splitting their earlobes to the size of quarters, tattoos, they're sticking pins in their eyebrows, through their nose. Do you think it's possible that they're doing this one? One, because for self-expression. This is what I feel. This is who I am. This is what I like. But also maybe in the background, not with a negative, like they're trying to prove anything or rebel, but let's use the word rebel. That's part of, that's the name of your show, Rebels, that they're doing this to say that you are not going to control me. In fact, it's going to be the other way around. I'm going to be such a heavy influencer. I'm going to take the lead and you're going to follow. I think absolutely. I mean, I look at myself, I never had big piercings or tattoos or any of that kind. But I remember as a little kid, I, I'm an indigo and I'm really strong headed and I did not like authority. I did not like to be put in a box. I still don't like it. And I did not like to follow the status quo. So for me, it was a little bit on a different level. But I remember when I was a little girl, my mom would always put out my clothing in the morning. And if it was winter, you know, I wanted to wear summer clothes. If it was summer, I wanted to wear winter clothes. I would always do the opposite of what I was asked to do. And it was not necessarily because I didn't agree or I thought this was flat out wrong. It was mainly, oh, if, if the status quo said this is what I should wear, I don't want to follow the status quo. I want to differentiate myself from it. So absolutely, these kids that are trying to look absolutely different, it might be just part of their thing of going hey i don't want to be like everyone else i'm going to he i'm here to change whatever the system is not working anymore i'm here to change the systems i'm here to change what what the old paradigms are and look at me i'm so different from the old i'm so different from the crowd so what was the first wave of children to come in called were they called the the indigo children right those were the indigos yeah and most of the indigo started coming in the, in the 1960s and 1970s. But I believe there are people who are much older, who have like that indigo energy has been around. I mean, look at Henry David Thoreau, who was so rebellious, who went to jail because he didn't agree to what the government spent the tax money on. Or we look at Albert Einstein who was would nowadays probably been maybe, you know, labeled with AD, ADHD and all kind of behavioral and learning disorders. So we had some early indigos. And then the big waves started coming in in the 60s and especially in the 70s and 80s. Who was the second wave of children? Was that the rainbow and then the crystal? Was that the order? The other way around. First the crystal and then the rainbow children. Is there a fourth wave coming in? Yes, there is. Mm, let me hang on. Let me let me leave that as a cliffhanger for a second. <laughs> as I'm wringing my hands over here. So we have the the indigo, the crystal, and the rainbow. Does indigo, crystal, and rainbow children still come in, or now because it's the third wave that we're on the outro of the rainbow, and yet the intro to this new wave of children called go. <laughs> It's called the Diamond Children. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> I love that. And so what tell me, I'm excited. What is what is the gig with these this new wave of kids coming in? I feel that from what I know and what I've studied and what I've read about and what I learned about, a lot of these children have never been incarnated on this planet. So they don't carry our third dimensional paradigms and imprints and they don't carry the pain that we've experienced for the past, I don't know, 13,000 years of the third dimension. 
the separation consciousness, the, the, the wars, the destruction, the betrayal, the things that we were out of integrity. These kids don't have these imprints. So they're not coming in to work out anything. They come in here as a pure slate and start ready to kick ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. So they, like you said, they're not carrying all this old world paradigm, residual energy. You know, even though the rainbow crystal indigo children might be coming in and they may be illumined and they are illumined, they may have some, some, some things to work out. But this new wave of kids, they're coming in divinely lit. Yes, wow. absolutely. And I believe they have extra strands of DNA. We, we've heard about the 12 strand DNA and some of these rainbow kids coming up, coming in with the 12 strands already fully activated to, in order to activate us. We had a fact arm and DNA. But I believe the diamond children actually have even extra strands, even more strands than the 12 strand DNA. And their pineal gland, if you think about, you know, ancient Atlantis, our pineal gland was the size of a ping pong ball. And it was directly connected to our pranic pipes. So it was fed prana all the time. There were specific breathing techniques that the Atlanteans knew to keep that pineal gland widely open. And it started shrinking, shrinking, shrinking during the time of the dimension. And now our pineal gland is the size of a pea. But I believe these diamond children's pineal gland is much, much bigger than our regular human pineal gland, the way we've experienced it for the past thousands of years. Have you met one yet? Have you I, met a, a diamond child yet? Yes, I have. And Tell me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm seeing a lot of these diamond children incarnating into parents who have done the work, so to say, who have a spiritual connection who know how to connect to that child on a really deep energetic level, or at least have people around who are able to telepathically communicate with them. And a dear friend of mine whose friend just had a diamond child, she, she can telepathically communicate with these children. And she said, these kids come in and even in the room space or even right after birth, they start their work, they start their job. They start educating the adults telepathically. They are bringing in wisdom. They're bringing in knowledge to help us shift into that new golden age that we're moving into. And it's so important that these diamond children, even more so than the indigos or rainbows, that these diamond children are surrounded by a spiritual community that can support them in their process. And that also maybe teaches them a little bit about how to cope with the current reality the way it is, because these kids come in for the first time ever. And even though they're consciously sh chosen to be here, they come in in this still dense vibration on planet Earth. So they need to have a very good support system around that can teach them how to deal with our 3D world as it's shifting fully into the 5D, and also how to protect themselves energetically, how to ground into this into the energy of, of the planet without feeling stuck, without picking up the heaviness. So how old would you say the newest diamond child would be? I mean, how fresh and new is this wave? I feel it's only been happening for the past four, maybe five years. So it's pretty much, we're pretty much at the beginning stages of that. I'm, I'm just sitting here taking this all in because it's beautiful. It's constantly like, just when we think the beauty and the magic and the sweetness is, well, it's infinite, obviously. But we get complacent in our world sometimes. And it just keeps coming. It just keeps coming. It just keeps coming. That uh, the beauty and the majesty and the glory and of God and all that is good just keeps showing up in the form of children with power. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you and must be childlike to enter. So they're here literally to point the way and break the, the collective ego of the adult world. Yes, absolutely. And what is really interesting, because I know a few people just birthed a diamond child, and I just had that conversation with a friend of mine who wants to get pregnant. And what I've been seeing is these kids have such a high vibration that the mother sometimes even has symptoms in the pregnancy because the vibrations are so different and quite often they have to harmonize one another during the nine months of the pregnancy. Otherwise, I see, I've seen mothers having really morning sickness for nine months straight because the vibration of the child is so high. And, but also the beauty is once the mother and the child are harmonized in the womb state, space stages, the kids, like I said, they often start teaching the mother and they're bringing these codes of love, of unity, of 
divine joy of bliss of like codes of knowledge and i feel they're literally imprinting their parents even during the pregnancy stages so it's really creating an awakening even for the parent that carries a child who is a diamond child from the chat room dd asked a question that's gonna it's, it's, it's a little out there oh in there rather <laughs> dd <laughs> asked a question it sounds like christy implies manipulation on a grand scale for the human species does christy think the guiding hand is alien or a god i think we are all god god is within us i think he was asking the i love the answer obviously <laughs> <laughs> i think he was asking the question do you think it was something other okay i think i have to answer this question by by sharing a little something else first dig it we are all star seeds. We are all star children. We, we, you know, even when Atlantis was created, the Atlanteans came from different plants. They came from Orion. They came from Sirius. They came from Andromeda. They came from Cassiopeia. We are all, every single being in this universe is a star child. We just have forgot that we are star children. So we consider anything that is coming from a different planet, even these star children, as alien, as foreign and it creates such a fear consciousness and a love separation of, yeah the separation yeah and I'm like you know the new golden era is about the unity consciousness i'm not saying these are aliens or there are aliens maybe invading our planet or even the whole conspiracy and fear that is created about alien landings and ufos and spaceships we are all one we're all star beings so you know and there are star kind of you know how they're stark beings or extraterrestrials that have a malevolent agenda and a benevolent agenda or like who are coming in to create peace and love and unity but it's the same on this planet you know as star beings there's star beings who have a really bad agenda and others who really want to just bring in peace harmony and joy and love like you for example and <laughs> so, you know, that we live in a dualistic reality. So the, the good and the bad, the positive and the negative is all around us, no matter if it's on this planet or in this universe or in this dimension. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm reading his comment to me. Thanks, KAB. Interesting. I think the question may be if we are native to this planet. <laughs> but I'm sure he's applauding that answer because I sure did love it. Uh, Christy, <laughs> we are slowly but surely at the bottom of the hour. Would you give out your contact information, anything you want to share with our listening audience so they can find out more about you and the beautiful, powerful work you're doing, dear? Thank you so much. My website is christyreeves.com. That's usually the best one. K-R-I-S-T-I-E-R-E-E-V-E-S.com. And it has a link to all kinds of things that I'm doing. It's currently upgrading, being upgraded. So in a couple of weeks, the new site will be up. And then we have the children of the rainbow.org, which has the links to all the shows I've been producing over the past years. And Rebel Hearts is on ubnradio.com and on iTunes and iHeartRadio. That's awesome. Inception Radio Network, I think about three weeks to a month ago, just joined iHeartRadio as well. So it seems like things are picking up all across the board in the spiritual arena. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And I feel like we're getting our voices out. Yeah. And like I said, something, something is shifting on this planet right now, even over the last year, where it feels like, okay, the masses, there's a mass consciousness awakening. That is happening where the masses are becoming receptive for the changes. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio. Look at the opening page, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome Power Pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me, and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works, 
you can bet. All you have to do is contact me, KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. In my work, Christy, the Divine Principle, when I was in eight years of dialogue with my higher self, spirit, God, it doesn't matter what you call it. When I was in a dialogue with divinity, one thing that came through is something to the effect of, don't kid yourself for a moment, Keith, many of these children are in waiting. And I said, basically, waiting for what? And I said, for the right time. And it was never really conclusive of what that waiting was but to the alludes to the idea that there can come a moment when these children go into a mode collectively all around the world simultaneously and bring about something of magnanimous proportions how do you feel about that idea i do totally believe that this can happen a lot of them are just divine children, rainbow, indigo, crystal, and or diamond children. But they really don't have, quote, an active part except to be part of the children of light flock. So the ones who are going to play the active role, let's just use this as a metaphor, wave their hands and make something magnificent happen. <laughs> and the reason they're coming here by the many, many, and even though few may be those kinds of active participants the others purpose or to help the active ones be lost in the flock so they're not so easily visible in other words it's hard to find a handful of people in a crowd of millions yes. so i think this is kind of does this resonate with your energy and your findings as well yes absolutely absolutely and i and i've seen these kids work on such different levels like some of some of these kids are really doing what i call the underground work and they're still doing the work and others are literally in the public eye where everyone knows about what they're doing. So I think they're working on all kinds of different levels and also depending, you know, again, on their soul plan, their soul mission, their soul purpose. I think that you are probably, no, <laughs> I'm absolutely sure that you're definitely a front runner of the movement of children that come in. Um, we can say many of us. Um, embody these qualities because of the work that we're doing but looking at you and the fact that you are your life's work your passion is about the children of light that has to tell me that you are a front runner who are helping the kids arrive safely and feel welcomed and spreading the message is this probably more commonplace that people of our age do and what we do or actually of that wave where you think it's just foreign food between i think I think both. I, and thank you for that. I mean, I, that's the reason why I've been doing this documentary series for the past six years. When I, when I got it offered, it was just such a gift because I've seen it around where these kids are coming in fully activated, fully present. But like I said, they don't fit the status quo. So there is so much, I don't know, like the, somehow this, the feeling of feeling lost not knowing who they are, or so many of these children, because they don't fit in the, the status quo, are being diagnosed or labeled, I should say, with a psychiatric disorder and placed on some psychotropic drug instead of having their gifts fully supported. So it's been my passion to educate the world about the Indigo and the Rainbow children and the gifts these kids have for the world in order to, to really be here and fulfill their mission. And then I feel like there are indigos that are maybe around my age who are doing certain things in the world, not for the children, but that is creating, let's say, technology or healing or whatever it is to heal the planet. And what I always say about the indigos, as indigos, we're born with a spear or a sword in our hand. We're here to go like this. Yeah. And tear down the old systems and then these rainbows, rainbow and the diamond children to now come in, no matter if it's on an energetic level or on a physical level, where we have created a different system for these kids to experience a raw weapon. So these these rainbow and diamond children who are coming in, they um they can really step into their gifts and step onto their path. And we see it in these kids who are 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, who are doing incredible work in this world, who are creating technology to clean up the oceans, 
Or there's a girl who I was just I was just writing with her father earlier this year, who created a method to turn banana peel into fossil fuels. I just had this 19-year-old gentleman on my show who started an organization that planted 14 billion trees over the last 10 years. He was nine when he started that organization. And there's 100,000 children in that organization. So we see these, these, these rainbow children who are fully coming and fully activated and they don't have to tear down the system. They don't have to fight like as Indigos did. They can just come in with their gifts and do their job of, of creating things, no matter if it's on an environmental level or on, on a healing level or on a, on a political level. I got the imagery <laughs> when you were saying I got the imagery of a, um, a metaphor of how it works, so to speak. The children are where we all come from, right? And creator or whoever is the manager with the clipboard says, Jack Doe, you got your mission. You know what you're doing? Yes, check. Jim Doe, check. Jill, check. All right, go. <laughs> Everybody just comes down and floods the system. You said something yeah. a moment ago that it sound, sounded very ironic and paradoxical. And I think because of that, it's very <laughs> magical. You said that okay, we got the Diamond Kids coming who are illumined probably beyond all the children that are coming in as of to date because they're coming in with no residual energy from past incarnations because they've never been incarnated before. So they're coming in clean. But you also said that they're coming in not knowing who they are. You would think if that they're that illumined that they would come in with full awareness of who they are intact. Is it because as soon as they get here, society starts dictating them who they are, church, religion, authorities, government, familial, peers, media? Is it because if they were left alone just to grow up on their own, they would their memory and their comprehension would be intact? Is it because they are, are so open? that on such so many layers and subtle layers that they're just getting bombarded and slammed with these ideologies of what we're telling them they are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. These kids are so energetically sensitive and so energetically open that they really need to have a good support, but also protection system. And, and, and have adults around that really know how to connect to them. So when they, they grow up, they're actually remembering who they are. I feel every single child that is being born knows who she or he is. And, and you know, and if you have, I mean, you have, you have a son. So when you have kids and you ask them, who do you want to be? Or what, what is your vision? These kids who are like three, four, five years old. They have these amazing ideas, these amazing visions. And I used to teach little kids. I used to teach dance for many years to, to kids. And, and you would ask them a question. There was no limit to their imagination. And I call this open kind of the movie script for our life. What is it that we're here to do? What is it that we would like to experience? Who is it that we want to meet? And, and what is our journey on this planet? We write this movie script. And when we come in, we, we have the memory of it. But the older we get, the more we are actually being educated out of it. And, and, and for all, I think it's, that's like that for all children, where we're being educated more and more out of our divine inner truth and, and being put into a little box. And some of us allowed that to happen. And then we, we are adults. Like one of my friends said, do you know what I was able to do when I was a little kid? I got educated out of that. And then my 30s, I had to relearn everything I knew how to do as a little child. And... Then there's, but then there's other kids who will say, no, I don't do this. I won't do this. I won't adhere to, to authority or I believe this is true and what you're saying is not true. Or why are you teaching me these things? And then often these children are, if they have a good support system, then they can be nurtured into, you know, growing up with that authenticity. But a lot of these kids these days are diagnosed with opposition defiance disorder, social behavioral disorder, ADHD, and being put on psychotropic drugs in order to make them conform. And that has been like one of my big missions to say, hey, nothing is wrong with these children. They're not broken. They're not bad. They're just different. They're maybe just more authentic. They're not as obedient as, as other people are. They really just need to stand in their truth and have their truth acknowledged. I absolutely love that because I've, I've been 
making a lot of posts here and there throughout the last couple of years since my son is in school. My son is a very phenomenal boy. He never causes me trouble ever, 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 ever. But every once in a while, he'll have a mini outburst in school, and they kind of want to correct it. And I, I tend to have a really big problem with that. <laughs> and it's I, I've come to realize that the children should not be learning the, t- the the school system's way of teaching. They should be teaching the way of the children's learning. Mm-hmm. It's just completely backwards. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's interesting. I just had Diana Cooper on my show, and and we interviewed her for the documentary series, and she said it's really interesting how it was done in Atlantis. When a child was born, that child came in with a certain mission, a certain gift, a certain knowledge. And the parents knew about that gift because they were connected to the soul of that child. So when the child would go to school or even before going to school, the focus of not just the parents, but also the teachers and the whole community was in supporting that child to strengthen their gift and and to grow in their gifts and not say, okay, your gift is you know, being a musician and all you have to do is study math and physics and chemistry. But it was if you're a musician, you're being taught to play music or create music or compose music from an early age. Yes, you still had to learn how to read and write, but whatever your gift was, was strengthened. And, and I think that's an amazing concept to look at, you know, how can we create school systems or education systems that strengthen the gifts of the children? And nurture that. Yes, teach them what they need to learn in order to exist in this world, but also strengthen their gifts. And there's actually, you talked even about um, self-teaching. There's an amazing school in, in Russia called Tekos, T-E-K-O-S. Google it if you don't know about it, people. And it is based on the Russian Ringing Cedar series, Anastasia, a book series by Vladimir McGray where she says, you know, what, where she's being asked, well, what is the system that we should teach our children? And she's like, the best system is no system at all for these kids. So what they did at Take Us is the children are self-taught. They have all the books and all the curriculum that they're supposed to learn in order to get a high school, what's equivalent for the, to a high school diploma. But these kids can't choose what to learn and when to learn. So there might be like an eight-year-old who's studying the mass curriculum of grade 11. But that is what their passion is right now. And what and they, there's no teachers in the school. The te- children teach each other. They have study groups where they teach each other the curriculum. And these kids do, I think it's an 11-year program that they have in Russia from primary school, including Finnish in high school. And the, some of these kids finish that 11-year curriculum in three to four years because they're self-taught. I have a dear friend of mine. The music everyone hears for the intro of the show, there's two pieces of music. There's always the theme song, which is See the Light, and there's a song just before that. That is my spiritual band called Lavender Soul, which is members, myself, another person, the singer, and members of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. The pianist, Angelo Rapin, my God, you have never heard anybody play a piano like this. Mm-hmm. He was from Romania when he was six years old. They realized that he had this gift. So since six years old, he didn't have to worry about history. He didn't have to worry about oversaturation with English and math. Of course, you have to go through the normal requisite of all that. But he's a classically award-winning pianist who plays for symphonies around the world. I mean, he's, they found his gift. And in America, at least... You just have to go through the system and, you know, grin and bear it. And it's just tough. Have, and I, it's my son the other day, he's starting to say things. He's 12 now. But he's even though he's 12, most kids at 12 years old, they're really coming into their consciousness to where they can be witty. But he is starting to say things to me and that's like, oh, my God, did you just use that as a reference? And it's almost not like a double entendre. It's like a triple and a quadruple entendre that has all these myriads of meanings. Do you happen to know, Christy, Dr. Nikki Elliott? I don't know Nikki Elliott, no. Do you live in Los Angeles? Where Where are you? I'm in Los Angeles, yes. She lives in to Altadena. Okay. I'll figure it out. Okay. She works with children in an intuitive way, and she's very powerful. Oh, my God, dear Lord, this woman is powerful. I want to connect you two. She would be phenomenal for your show. That would be amazing. I would love that. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. 
So, Christy, what do you just and though we, we don't want to put things in a box, we don't want to limit it, but just from your your intuitive feeling, your intuitive base, as you have been working in this field of spirituality with children of light, and you saw the progression of things, how they've unfolded, what do you foresee could be possible with this unfoldment and these new ways of children coming in. How do you see things playing out without pigeonholing? What do you see as a vision for this experience? I feel that these children are really leading the way into the new golden, what we call the new golden age. And, you know, the, the new golden age, it's at that age of, of oneness, overcoming boundaries, even health, healing, clean environments. And what I'm, I'm witnessing in these children, and even in my research, there's several different categories. There's the kids who are the environmentalists, who are creating things to clean up our environment. Then there's these kids who are artists, who you, you hear singing or playing the piano, and it, it does something to you. It just heals you internally, just listening to that. And, and then there's these kids who are creating other technology that no matter if it's, you know, in the IT industry or even technology that might help us heal our physical bodies. And I believe that these kids really are leading the way into that new golden age where we will return to that consciousness of oneness, of coming together. And... What I love about them is, is they're really the way show. And, you know, it's, I'm not talking about the 15-year-olds. I'm talking about even kids, the indigos, the adult indigos from their 30s, 40s, or even 50s or 60s nowadays. And it feels like a lot of these indigos who are older, they have been, it feels like sometimes even, as, you know, we've been trying to open locked doors. It just wouldn't open, wouldn't open. We've been shaking and rattling and shaking and rattling. And... We could only create tiny changes, but not the big changes. And I feel like finally these doors are starting to open, where people who have been on this planet finally are given opportunities to anchor in the light coast they've been wanting to anchor in for a long time. So what I'm envisioning is really creating that new paradigm of what is possible and these kids leading us to do that. Here's a fun question. Who is the person, or is it the child or children, that deem to be rainbow, crystal, indigo, diamond? Is there a person that oversees a board of this <laughs> thing and says, oh, this is what we're going to call the next wave of children? <laughs> I just know about the term indigo, how it came about. So I can, can share yeah, that. Please tell me, share that with me, please. Um, back in the 1960s, 1970s, there was a woman named Nancy, Nancy Tappe, and she was a therapist. And she had something called synesthesia. And synesthesia is when two senses are working at the same time. And she would see the world through color. And she had these, these group of kids that were coming into therapy session, and they all had very similar ca characteristics. And, and some of them are like that, that strong energy of, of defiance, not wanting to be boxed in, not adhering to authority the way other kids were adhering to authority, being so super strong willed, but also being highly sensitive, highly empathic, high, um, highly connected. And she said that all these kids who had these characteristics had this indigo colored aura. So she started calling them indigo kids just because they had an indigo aura. And that house, the term indigo kids was actually birthed. I don't know exactly who birthed the term crystals. I don't know who birthed the term rainbows. I first heard about it through Dr. Lorraine Virtue's work. And she said someone came up with the term crystal because these kids had these eyes, these big eyes that looked like crystals. And then the rainbow children had all the colors of the rainbow at the aura. And supposedly a diamond children have that diamond color in the aura and a little bit of that violet flame of Saint Germain as well. But it's, it's mainly determined by the aura for these kids. And I cannot tell exactly who came up with the term. No one even, I, in all my research, I've never found out who came up with that term. So that's a very good question. But at least I could answer about the indigos. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe now that we are moving very well into the golden age, the next children will be the golden children. 
Yes. Dig it, dig it. So if there's no particularly any definite length of time from what wave of children that come in. Mm-hmm. It, they, it happens when it happens. When there's enough of them, then people are saying, I just saw 100 children with all the same color aura, so that must be a new wave that's finally landed yeah. on Earth. So let's call them whatever it is we're seeing in the auric field. Pretty interesting. Thank you for that. <laughs> so what's coming down the pike for Christy Reeves and Rebel Hearts? I mean, where do you have a vision of where this is all going to go? Of course, you're open to whatever's going to happen, of course. But where do you see things going for you, dear? Um, I'm so passionate about my shows that I'm, I'm working on. And then my dream, my vision has been to create a feature documentary about the topic. So I've been working on a treatment. I've been working on a script. I've been working with some people over here to, to turn all that information into, um, a feature documentary and show these, I think it's going to be more about the rainbow children without calling them rainbow children, but it's going to be more about these children who are really leading the way, who are showing us, hey, if I'm at the age of 14, can do that. If I'm at the age of nine, can find an organization that ends up having 100,000 members, why are we sitting around waiting for someone? Come on, let's all get up. Let's all come together. Let's all create change. So, So that is one of the projects that I've been working on over the last, yeah, I said it last fall. I mean, it's been in the development for a while, but I really got working on it in the future i still would like to chat with you and the other people you had brought into the circle about Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward with the project you and i started to yeah envision about the rainbow kids and make them superheroes with whatever and we're gonna leave that right there and da 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 (laughs) (laughs) but that would just be so fun if we still have that connection Absolutely. It's yeah. still it's still on my to-do list. It's still on my manifesting I get it. I get it. I get it. And I love that when I watch you, you know, we're on video now, um, watch you, but also when I hear you talk and all the interviews you do, when I see you on your Rebel Heart Show in, this, in the Facebook stream, you are very passionate about what you do. And I did a presentation Sunday. And I talked about how passion is the fire. It's the drive. It's the roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty kind of energy, right? And (laughs) sincerity is that soft part. It's that soft part that says, I'm serious about this and I mean this. And when you put those two together, that male energy and that female energy, boy, stuff begins to happen. And I see that very alive in you. Thank you. Very alive in you. Because, in fact, I say, when I put something together and i want to create something it is a fact there is no way this is not going to happen that doesn't even come up in me as a possibility uh-huh. i think uh-huh. that you are sister in that way yes yes absolutely <laughs> and that's why i had to call my show rebel hearts because it's the rebel with a heart <laughs> i love it i love that there's the contrast that's the fire in the ice if I, dig it dig it uh krista we are slowly but surely coming to the top of the hour where would you like to see the closing of this radio show give me some dialogue about what you want to express about the children of light and your work just anything you think that would take us out nicely i think i would love to send out a message of empowerment to the center of light radio audience does that sound good <laughs> yeah, please continue. <laughs> um, I feel these children are teaching us so much. Kind of what I said, these children are teaching us authenticity. They're teaching us to follow that inner voice instead of the external calling, the external paradigm, the external imprinting. These children are teaching us to be courageous to, to, and to go for our dreams and to do what is right for us. These children are teaching us that anything is possible, and they're really, really unafraid. They're really brave, actually. And I feel that every single person in this world, and, and you know, just to trace it back a little bit, when, when we were talking about the Indigo Savimbo, the christening, and the Diamond children, we're not creating another label, or only these children can do it, or these children are special and other, other people are not. It's, it was mainly a mere explanation of the, like certain characteristics certain children and adults have to, for, in order to understand ourselves better. I'm like, when I first heard the term of Indigo, it was more, it helped me to understand who I was and how I showed up in this world. But I believe every single person on this planet has a little bit of Indigo, Rainbow, Crystal, and even Diamond Energy in there. Remember, we're all star beings. 
and that every single person is capable of implementing change on this planet. Every single person has the capacity to listen within, create their mission, follow their voice. And if we are one or not if, but when we are 100% in alignment with our divine inner calling, following our voice, we can create the most amazing, beautiful, and profound changes on this planet. So I invite every single one who's listening to this, be brave, be courageous, be an indigo and a rainbow kid. Listen to that inner voice and see where it's guiding. Be a rebel heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was just beautifully said. I really took all that in. I was just drinking it like water. Very, very refreshing to empower everyone. And yes, and we, we do need to acknowledge that there are waves of children coming in with special gifts. But all children are special. And, and the fact that you mentioned that we all are this, we all are that. And because it's just a matter of firing up the engine. Wanting to fire up your own ferrari spiritual ferrari engine and hammer on that pedal and bring about things very fast or whatever in due time but the metaphor is to get in the seat and drive your car yes well thank you for being a wonderful guest as always christy on center of light radio i'm looking forward to connecting you with dr nikki she is absolutely phenomenal you're gonna fall in love with her and vice versa that's for sure so would you get up give out your contact information one more time so our audience can find more about you in the amazing powerful work bringing these children through what can be a tough time it's very very gracious of you good thank you so much for that beautiful message yeah. yes you can find me at www.christyreeves.com that's k-r-i-s-t-i-e-r-e-e-v-e-s.com our documentary is found can be found at the children of the rainbow.com it also has the links to all the interviews where you can watch them and i'm on ubnradio.com every wednesday at 3 p.m and the replays are available on my youtube channel christy reeves tv and on itunes and as a podcast on iHeartRadio. thank you for being a guide and a leader to help bring forth the divinity through the new wave of kids that are, you know, they're coming in. And as older people die off and the new kids come in and everyone's becoming more and down, more and down, eventually everything's going to be filtered and heaven and earth is going to be the prophecy. And I bet all of us old people, when we leave, we won't, we won't be able to wait to get back to the new <laughs> golden age. Again, Christy, thank you, beautiful lady. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Uh, love and light. Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchard in Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can find me sitting in this chair conducting affairs of the heart. Center of Light Radio now partnered up. I don't know if that partner would be the right word, but we are part of um, iHeart Radio. And Center of Light has a couple of few pieces of news that's going to be arriving really soon. So I was told by MJ Lucas. And he's not telling me yet. He's leaving me on the cliff. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Every Monday night, again, 6 p.m. Eastern time. When you lay down at night, breathe, 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 breathe. Do it consciously. Taste your breath. And once you breathe yourself through the ceiling of thought, the stargate's going to open up and a profound, deafening silence will fill your being. And you will know you have made it. Peace, love, and light.